it's Safi and Marco, and we are doing a review of Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, which was released in 2014, and this will be one of several movies we will be reviewing in anticipation of the new release of, Marco? Infinity War. And Marco wanted me, to, he has already seen all these movies, and Marco wanted me to understand all the characters, well, actually, at least several of the characters who will be in the That's movie. not true. I had not seen Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. But anyway, all the rest of them, Iron Man and the Avengers and uh, Doctor Strange. Well, just the important ones. There are a lot of ones like... Iron Man 3, which is my least favorite Marvel movie, and, uh, well, we watched Spider-Man Homecoming, unfortunately. Ugh. That wasn't necessary, so. Okay. Well, you want me to be able to understand all, uh, several of the really important characters who will be in this upcoming movie that's being released when, Marco? This month, at the end of this month. April 27th. Or April 26th. Next, next Thursday. Oh. I'll be seeing it on I Wednesday. E I went Thursday evening. I can't remember. What? But I'm going to be seeing it opening night. In IMAX 3D. Okay, well, this is how it goes. It's 1988. And young Peter Quill is listening to a music tape. With his bright orange headphones. His father comes and takes him to see his mother, who is lying in a hospital bed surrounded by several people. She reaches out and wants him to take his hand, take her hand. He refuses because he looks scared and confused. And then an alarm goes off and she passes away. He screams, no, and then runs out of the hospital and down the middle of the road. Suddenly, a light shines down on him from above, and a big spaceship appears and sucks him up into it. From then on, the movie seems like one big roller coaster ride. The next scene shows a man in a spaceship landing on an abandoned planet called Morag. He's wearing a special breathing mask and takes it off. And plugs in some earphones and starts playing music and starts dancing. Uh-oh, I think this might be Peter Quill the adult because it looks like the same earphones and the same tape player he had when he was a kid. Whoa! So, he, he seems to be looking for something on this planet. He strolls into a cave and is looking for an orb. He finds it and grabs it and starts to leave. These aliens who landed on the planet too right after him surprise him with their weapons pointed him pointed at him. Then the guy says that he's Peter Quill, Star Lord, legendary outlaw. They're like, I, we don't know who you are. And they continue to point their <laughs> weapons at him. They want the orb too, apparently, for their boss, whatever. They work for Ronan. Ronan. They work for Ronan, who is very evil. The accuser. He's called Ronan the accuser. Do you like getting accused? <laughs> Using these two weird small devices that are like something that you put in your hand, the palm of your hand, Peter Quill gets away and back onto his spaceship. From then on, this movie is about two things. The formation of a group, which is, which is comprised of Peter and several people he makes in prison. And you think, oh, prison? Yes, he gets in trouble. Oh, space prison. Space Excuse prison. me. He gets in trouble Really, it's nothing bad. It's like he's fighting, but for some reason, it's 
I guess it's more like space jail, but it's like a prison, though. It looks like a prison. But anyway, this movie's about two things, and it's this group that forms from Peter and several people he meets in prison. A raccoon-like creature named Rocket Raccoon, a tree person called Groot that only says three words, I am Groot. Oh, that's not true either. Yes. Uh, at the end of the movie, he says, we're Groot. Oh. Excuse okay. me. Which drove me crazy at first. A woman named Gamora, who tried to steal the orb away from Peter, and works for the evil master Ronan, the accuser. And finally, a big muscly guy named Drax the Destroyer, who Marco says was a WWE wrestler before joining the cast of this movie. Of course, there are ups and downs with the group. For example, at first, no one trusts Gamora because of her affiliation to Ronan, especially Drax, because his wife and daughter were killed by Ronan. <clears throat> what? The group... <coughs> the group forms to find out who wants the orb, and they will sell it to that person and split the proceeds among themselves. The second part of the movie is about what happens with the orb and how they change their decision about what to do with it. And finally, how their group turns into a band of friends working together to save the galaxy. Okay, Marco, do you want to talk about anything about the movie? Because I have not said anything about uh, what Peter or uh, how this was a roller coaster ride uh, because it was. It, there were tons there was tons of action and it went up and down and all around and so that's why I called it compar comparable to a roller coaster. So what do you have to say about it, Marco? Well, when it was first gonna come out, all these people said it would be horrible. They said, eh, this is stupid. I don't wanna see it. It's just going to be stupid people. Marco. And I knew it was going to be good. And, and you know, we watch movie fights every week. Well, we used to. Every, every week, religiously, on Sunday, watch movie fights. And they had a topic, will Guardians of the Galaxy be good? And, of co and all these people are like, no, it's not. Nobody's going to watch it. It's going to be horrible. And... I think that's the reason why people love this movie so much is because everybody said it was going to be the worst thing ever before watching it. And it's it's not the worst thing ever, but it's not the best thing ever e either. I, I think it is one of those bandwagon movies where a lot of people, or people watch it and they say it's good and they they have other people follow what they say it's it's not really that good of a movie in my opinion it won't stand the test of time because a lot of the humor is childish although i think there are some really funny moments and funny funny parts i really love yondu a lot i think he's probably him and Chris Pratt are the best parts of the movie. And I like how they they have Thanos and they have all these space elements, these space people who need to be introduced and I like the space battle at the end kind of. I don't really like how it ends, but it's definitely better than those crappy Star Wars movies, so I guess that's one thing. It's just not spectacular like I expected it to be. And and I, I just expected more. Especially from the same guy who did Scooby-Doo the movie. That movie is ten times better than this movie. Which I know people are gonna, gonna laugh at that, but I, it's true. What, what do you think about that? Do you agree with that? That it's like Scooby-Doo? No, that Scooby-Doo is better than this movie. Oh. Mm, 
I don't know. Scooby Doo's a cartoon. That's why I meant the last one. No, Scooby Doo the movie. Oh, Scooby Doo the movie. With uh, with Matthew Lillard, Freddie mm. Prince Jr., Sarah Michelle Gellar. Maybe. I, it's it's hard to say because that wasn't about being in space, and they had all these, like, that's what was really amazing to me. You know, in Star Trek, they had all these little inventions. They had the the teleporter, they had the phaser, and, and so it kind of, they focused on each thing very closely, so you really got to know each, each device, and, you know, it's like science fiction, and this one, just like right off the bat, he's in this cave, got these aliens after him, he's got this orb, and like I said, he had these things in his hand, and all of a sudden he's out of there, away from them, and Pressing little, I mean, it's this things, little things, objects that, 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 that fit into the palms of his hand. And I'm like, you can't really see them. And, you know, and, um, it, you know, it, it, and that was kind of like, that's why I said it was like a roller coaster ride because you really had to watch to keep up with, I mean, some of this detail. And that's the thing about, like, Star Trek, for example. Which there, were, there was episode after episode after episode, I guess, that was one advantage. That's how you would get to know what the kind of world they were living in and what they were using to, to get along. But, I mean, it uses but the not, same framework as Scooby-Doo. I guess. Kind of, where they all... You remember at the beginning of uh, Scooby-Doo, they all break up. And so then they're forced to work together. And the same thing happens in this movie. There are these these people and they're forced to work together to get out of it and then they become a group and they have their differences but I think that the humor is also better in Scooby-Doo as well like they had that joke with the the woman the the love interest the shaggy mm -hmm. and she said her name was Mary Jane and he said that that that's his favorite name you know because Mar marijuana, Mary Jane, oh, and so and that's that is really really intelligent humor, and in this movie, the humor is a. Uh, it's more. Really give me that guy's leg! I want that guy's leg! <laughs> yeah. And so, you you see what I'm saying? The 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 humor, is I I still th this movie is not a bad movie. No. I'm just I think it's gotten a lot of praise. It's gotten, I mean, people have said it's the best Marvel movie ever. It's nowhere near the best Marvel movie ever. And so that's why I'm knocking it down a bit. Okay, well, at first I did not like this movie at all. And you remember that. I had, was trying to force myself to watch it. And the reason why is because apparently I, Rock and I had the same feelings about it. It seemed like a kid's movie. And these days, since my kids are all grown up, and all the little kids in our family either live in Chicago and California, I don't watch kids' entertainment anymore. When I was a parent with little kids, I never gave it a second thought. I even remember the words to Barney, Pokemon, and Bob the Builder. However, as Guardians of the Galaxy continued, I began to enjoy the camaraderie, camaraderie of the group, all the action, and Chris Pratt, who just seems like such a nice person, and an, an actor to, who adapts to any situation that he's in. Also, the basic story about Peter Quill being kidnapped by alien collectors led by a blue-skinned alien named Yondu is intriguing and interesting. They don't kidnap him to inflict harm. In fact, Yondu treats Quill like a son and adopts him into the collector's group, and they teach him everything that they know. How to be a thief. Yeah, well, but the fact that he ends up, I mean, we don't see anything between when he's kidnapped and when he's adult. So we have no idea what happens, and we don't even know that's him the only reason, well, maybe somebody else does, the only reason I knew it was him is because he had the same earphones and the same little uh, recorder. And um, 
nobody else would have that, but the kid who was all grown up. So um, I thought that was intriguing because usually when you have a movie about aliens kidnapping, that's usually an adult. And I, I guess I can think of, right off the bat, I guess I can think of one uh, movie. I um, uh, can't think of the name of it. Very famous movie. Uh, where a little kid was taken and then he comes back, I guess, and his mother joins him or whatever, and they get aboard the spaceship. Anyway, oh, okay. It's a Steven Spielberg movie, I think, and it, you know, it's uh, Devil's Mountain out west, which there really is a place. I, there's a st postage stamp that I have that was put out in the 60s, I think, that has, or 50s, 60s, whatever that has a picture of that mountain. I didn't even know that was real, but it is. Anyway, they took a little kid, but that was like for two seconds. This is like a whole lifetime where this kid is taken and he grows up. So I thought that was intriguing. And usually you're, oh, alien experiments and this and that. It wasn't anything like that. It's completely different. You, so. Chris Pratt was the best part of the movie. Because he was basically Han Solo, but better. And he he liked to listen to music, so of course he would be dancing a lot and playing music in the background. But I I have to say I, I'm still it's it's a very underwhelming movie, and that's coming from somebody who really wanted to like the movie. Especially after knowing it would be good and knowing people would end up liking it. I thought the villain was okay. He's just another generic Marvel villain that doesn't really uh, yeah, go beyond. Yeah, is, is really not that outstanding. I mean, even the look of the villains and everything. They, you they stand any, accused. You can, any, <laughs> can be anybody. You can dress up in a costume and you could be the villain in this movie. That's why it, it was very unexciting to me. I mean, if you compare it to some other movie. The Joker. Oh yeah, The Joker is and, a perfect And villain. look at these cartoon movies. It's weird, these cartoon movies, they do villains better than live action. You have Mask of the Phantasm, that villain fantastic. And that was good. That was just a woman, but she had an outfit on and yeah. she had a voice changer. And and it's a lot more impressive than this just random blue guy in a cloak. Of course, what'd you think about Nebula? Oh, is that Karen Gilliam? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say something. I couldn't think of her name right off the bat, but that was very surprising. I can't believe that was her. She was on this TV show that lasts about two seconds that I really loved, and I can't even remember the name of it. Is it anymore. the the bitch at apartment thirteen? No. Okay. No. It was a comedy That's show, wild. and uh, it was on for two seconds, and both of the leads, her and this the Korean guy, uh, who she worked with, he's in Star Trek, and he's in something else. But I mean, they both. Uh, they both made it big, and she's also in that new um, um, that new movie with uh, the jungle movie, the game movie. So, what do you think about that character? Well, I was shocked. Marco looked it up. Apparently, she has beautiful long uh, red hair, and she had to shave her head to play this part. And she was good. She was now. She was a good bad guy. So she was the she better did. bad guy than the other guy. Well, she, the I, it, it's hard to believe that's her. I would never have known that. Which that that's pretty good. That's a testament to her acting. Well, to to the movie's credit, they do doctor her voice to make her sound like a cyborg. I believe they doctor because it sounds doctored. Well, she's she was a model, so she's kind of oh, she's a little bit tall, and. Uh, she doesn't look tall in the movie. She looks short, which is weird. Maybe because everybody else is so much taller. I don't know. But that that's why it was another thing. I would never have recognized her. And when we come back, 
in another review, I'll tell what the name of that show was she was in. I feel bad that I don't know. Because I signed a petition to keep it on, but I guess they weren't up to keeping it on, so it was really good. <laughs> I can't even remember the name because it's been a, it's been like two or three years now since it, it was just on for like one season. And I think they may have not even given it a whole season, so it was good. So anyway, apparently in this movie though, as our link to another movie we will, we will re be reviewing next. Doctor. Doctor Strange. It's the orb. And what is this orb? Oh, it's Why an infinity it? stone. Excuse me. It's I an infinity that, stone. It's, it, it isn't Excuse the orb. Me. It's what's in the orb. Yeah. We take it apart and it contains an infinity stone. Uh -oh. Which we will talk about in the next movie review when the next time we review Doctor Strange, which will be right after this. Yeah. So, we won't say anything more about it, but the thing is, like I said, the second part of the movie is all about the orb. So but first they were going to sell it, then they the changed their mind, and then they want to preserve it and not let any bad. Guys the comedy's not any good. It's it's not as good as it could be. The action isn't is okay. So what is good about this movie? What well, did you like? I like the um. I like the way everybody worked together. They were all very different beings. Beings and different personalities. And they were led by... Um, yeah, well, we've seen that before. Yeah, but, well, it was they're different. It's in space, and there's a lot yeah. of... Uh, this gadgets, and, and the... Uh, it's just different. It's just a... Di uh, and it's uh, friendly. Mm. I don't know. I just... Uh, it's not... It, it, there is evil, and but the, it just isn't dark. I guess it's more, it's happy. It's happy dark. <laughs> I know it's really weird but um, to say that, but I think because, I think it was, must have been oriented toward kids. So what would you rate this movie? Oh, okay, well. A I cheeseburger? No, I gave it a good beef stew, which I'm going to make tomorrow that lasts a couple of days because beef stew has several ingredients it has beef it has carrots and celery and onions and potatoes and all together along with some beef broth and some spices it comes together to make a nice meal and so in order to achieve what they're going to do with the orb and to protect the galaxy, they all have to get to know each other, overcome their differences, and uh, work together and yeah. to be a team. And they're called the Guardians of the Galaxy, oh, so they're a team of Guardians. It's hard to say what to rate this movie because yeah. it's not... There's... Obviously, there's a lot of flaws to it. I'm not going to sit here and just pretend the movie's a perfect movie. I'm going to say what I feel. And I would give this movie nachos with spicy nacho cheese for, uh, for, for all the humor and the action. And I would also put some guacamole on the side you can dip it in for uh, Gamora being green yeah. and it, and beef maybe some beef on top and some beans and some tomatoes and lettuce and because you have all these different parts working together and it's a pretty good snack food it's <laughs> not like out, outstanding food I mean especially what she was going to rate it <laughs> at first she was going to rate it like this fancy five-star meal and then she changed her mind well sometimes I don't know for me I I have to think about it for a while before I ra rate it and not because I don't know if it's just if it's totally bad you know what you're going to rate it and if it's just outstanding and if it's kind of in between but you have to especially the way we rate our movies 
um, it's uh, it takes a little thinking to figure out what to rate it. So um, I thought what I rated it with beef stew and how they all worked as a team and were all different. I mean, you've got a you've got a tree called Groot. See why which I isn't didn't really a person, but what I why I didn't rate it beef stew is because when I think of beef stew. You think of a movie like The Revenant, you think of like a, a deep movie with a lot of character and a lot of, uh, maybe it takes place in the winter, so you think soup, hot, you're enjoying this hot soup while, it, while it's the winter time. But when I think of Guardians of the Galaxy, I think of space, I think of fun, uh, childlike uh, imagination, a lot of colors. What you get with nachos. Hmm. Well, that sounds good. So I think uh, we will be back with a review of Doctor Strange. And, uh, and then Iron Man. And then Avengers. And then Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Which I'm extremely excited for since it has Kurt Russell on it. And hmm. Syl Sylvester Stallone. Well, and then finally Infinity War. But before Infinity War, I will be doing a video talking about my personal Marvel movies worst to best, ranking them <laughs> like I like to do. Yeah. And I also am going to be reviewing a book called The Cave of Bones by Ann Hillerman. So we're going to, we wanted to do different kinds of reviews, but it's a matter of having the time, you know, to watch the movies, watch the shows, and to read, plus all the other things that we do. So, but I wanted to try it because the book came out, it's not very long. Uh, the Hillermans, her, Ann Hillerman and her father, Tony Hillerman, are good writers. He passed away and she's kind of taken up the helm of his book series about the Southwest, New Mexico, Arizona, and uh, so anyway, you look forward to that, okay? So we'll be back. Bye, everybody. And make sure to watch that Scooby-Doo movie. If you want to watch a really good movie that has the same writer-director of Guardians of the Galaxy, but better, oh, watch Scooby-Doo. Goodbye. Bye.